Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. In today's video, I'm going to show how to use Subversion to get a revision. As you can see, uh, I have my Flash application form open. And uh, I made a change somewhere, somehow, where the front page, the table view, only shows this small section here. Prior, it filled up the whole area. And if you look at the form view, you can see that it shows all of the space here, and then some, and all the other forms are working properly, but this form is only showing a small amount, and that's very irritating. I cannot figure it out for the life of me what I did to make this happen. And therefore, having subversion, I'm going to use that to get a previous version back. So let's look at how to do that. In my application, I have all of these here. Now, um, <clears throat> given the fact that um, I could just get um, part of the application back, for example, I could just get this part back, a previous version, for example, and then just swap out the main form. But that presents some problems too, because as you know, when you drag a data control over onto an onto a web page, it creates other files that may have um, some sort of uh, connection to here. So if my previous version of the JSF does not have uh, per certain pieces of information over here, uh, these, these will exist, but my main will, will not have that. So I've got pieces of files here that I'm not using on my main form. And it could be that on my main form, I have some, you know, maybe I drew a, dragged a data control over. Um, and so it has some pieces of information that may not be supported in the page depths, or maybe there's a Java class that I have in there that, uh, or a data binding that is uh, not on the web page. Uh, or on the web page, but uh, I deleted it out here. So it's really difficult to know what to do. But um, let's just start because really what the first thing I need to do is find out what revision um, this started happening in. So I'm going to go and do a checkout. Okay. And I'm going to use revision using this checkbox here. And I'm going to select the previous revision. And I've been doing this a little bit today. So there's some extra revisions there. Uh, I'm going to choose 14. So we grab 14. And let's just look at this. And I want to look at the candidates too. Okay, so we've got 14. Let's run it and make sure that it shows the form as it should be. I'm going to just uh, take that out there. Okay, I'm running the new file. Okay, and as you can see, I have the full page here, which is a, a good thing, all right? And um, if we look back at the old one, you can see that some of this has changed. I took some of the things off because they were just test um, files. I was working with um, getting these to work, so I put a, a little uh, thing here to debug. At any rate, um, this is the version that I now start want to start to use, okay? Now... I could do a version commit working copy, in which case this version is going to become the most recent version. But I think that's going to cause some problems. Let's do that. And put in a very large capital written revision 14 and press OK. Now, I'm going to just make a quick change here. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. Save. Let's go over to candidates. Oh, actually, that's 
not a new file. So candidates are where the new files are. There we go. Now look here. I've got 20 incoming. Now, this is the concern that I have. Are these incoming because they are uh, considered part of the previous version? As you remember, I went back a version. So what files are these coming from? Now the incoming section is, is let's say you're working in a team and other people are borrowing files from the master repository, making changes and then committing them. You need as a developer to be downloading these, those new files so that you have the freshest version. And hopefully you're not making changes to the same files, in which case you're going to have to reconcile them. So my impression is, is that what I have here are the files from the previous change. I mean, from the original version that I took. And I've now got an earlier version. And my concern is, is that if I use these files, it's going to overwrite my previous version. So that is one of the, the difficult parts of subversion. What do you do when you've got these situations? Now, it could be that the best thing to do would be either to branch it or completely create a new repository connection. Actually, uh, create a connection. Create a local repository, excuse me. Uh, and just start over using this version and just get rid of this completely. And I think that would probably be uh, the best alternative. And I'm just going to call it to the Flash 2013. This is kind of the most simple version because I don't want to mess with all of these other files. So now I can't version this file that I have here because it's already versioned under here. And what I would need to do is click on the Flash and then do an export. And I'm going to send it to my simp C temp directory. Okay, close this application up, test that the export worked properly by running it, and then uh, version it to here and maybe just get getting rid of this completely. I think that's probably the best bet. Uh, there are a number of ways of dealing with it. And if you're working in a team environment, um, there's obviously going to be somebody who's making those decisions for you on what the best way to do it is. Uh, if you're working on your own, this would be an adequate way of handling it. So uh, nothing is as simple as it seems. And uh, this is an, a good example of what looks simple is actually a very complex interaction. So I hope that uh, this was helpful. Um, I know I didn't really solve anything as far as, uh, but I, I think I hopefully gave you uh, some reasonable alternatives of what you could possibly do. It's really up to what you might, what you need to do to make your system work in an intelligent way, and especially if you're working in a team environment. Okay, have a great day.